And wonderful to have all of you with us at the Nobel Summit and to this session called Breakthroughs. And breakthroughs is what we need because we've entered the decisive decade for humanity. We're running out of carbon budget. Intact nature that builds our resilience is increasingly rare. And we're coming dangerously close to tipping points. And at the same time, we see social tipping points emerging. Can we make this year a positive social tipping point for humanity? That's the grand question. And we're not talking only about technological breakthroughs. We're talking about social and political breakthroughs as well. And four unstoppable forces are aligning. The first breakthrough is political. At the end of this session, we will have John Kerry, climate envoy for President Biden, speaking to Marsha McNutt, president of NAS and co-host for the summit. John Kerry masterminded the Biden Climate Summit, and it's no exaggeration, I would argue, to say that the Biden Summit changed the course of history. The U.S. commitment to cut emissions by half by 2030 following an exponential carbon law is a game changer. We now have a G3 on climate emerging in the world. The three largest economies, the US, China, and the European Union, have adopted targets for net zero by 2050 or latest 2060 in the case of China. This is a key step towards scientific alignment, a necessary but not sufficient step. I was walking through the four breakthroughs that we're starting to see. And the number one, of course, has to do with climate envoy John Kerry, the fact that we're starting to see breakthroughs in terms of scientific alignment with the exponential roadmaps of following the carbon law of cutting emissions by half every decade. The second breakthrough area that I hope I was able to mention to you before I was broken off was is on economics and the point that President El Gore, uh, Vice President El Gore pointed out that uh, now zero carbon energy systems are at dollar by dollar parity competitive on the markets in the world, which is, of course, a game changer. The third breakthrough area is, of course, technological. And we've already started discussing that in our main first session for the summit, that we are at the cusp of a technological revolution on, on AI, biotech, nanotech, robotics, big data, digital technologies. This revolution can support and accelerate the S-curves towards a sustainable future, but it can also be rebounding and accelerate the pathway in the wrong direction. We're right at the beginning. This is an industrial revolution powered by the digital revolution, and we in science, communities and stakeholders at large must be part of this journey to be able to keep it within a safe operating space. And the fourth and final important breakthrough is, of course, exactly what, what CA was, was so eloquent to sharing with us, the social movements, the unacceptable reality that we're undermining the life support systems on earth for future generations. And the next generation, as we know so well, has risen and said, enough is enough. You are risking our future on planet earth. Young people have ignited a social transformation around the world and changing the conversation. Now, announcements today of over thousands of cities and regions declaring a state of climate emergency, creating what I would argue today is a social tipping point. But at the same time, last week, the Cambridge Commission, the first sustainability commission from the Cambridge University Press on Behavioral Change, released its scientific synthesis, showing that individual behavioral change alone is unlikely to scale fast enough. The planetary emergency is too severe. We need strong sustainability, setting quantified scientific targets and limits like end dates on combustion engine, zero loss of nature. We need to position the world economy within hard sustainability boundaries for a resilient planet, as shown by Parthadas Gupta in the recent seminal report for the UK government on the economics on biodiversity. We need the integration of policy behavior innovation, where individual behavior change combines with regulation and policies. Political leadership is fundamentally important. But citizens and social uprising, social uprising in the world is, of course, key. And that's where it's so inspiring to listen to C.A. Bastida and, and her fellow youth movement activists around the world speaking so eloquently and powerfully, for example, at the Biden Climate Summit and elsewhere about justice, representation and the right 
to a stable planet. The solutions to climate challenge must be inclusive. They must be fair. They must be about adjusting failings in society, particularly inequality. So altogether, these four breakthroughs, the political, the economic, the technological, and the youth movement or social movement fundamental behavioral change creates a space for disruptive decade for innovation and transformation. And this is a decade to close up that needs to add up at the planetary scale. We've never done that before. The world needs to cut emissions by half in nine years time and secure Earth resilience along the way. To have any chance of landing Earth within a 1.5 degrees Celsius safe operating space. A global sustainability transformation, not to say revolution. Nothing less than social and technological breakthroughs are needed at speed and scale. That's why this session is so important here at the summit.